Hello everybody, my name is Lee Roadhammel with ShopSaber CNC. Some of you already know me as Rody. Today we're going to take a look at the ShopSaber controller and how easy it is to use. Over here at ShopSaber, we've integrated a robust, easy to use point and click technology in our controllers. So let's get started. Now that we're at the controller, let's go over the layout and its functions. The first window to the left has two boxes. The top box is the command bar and just below it is the history bar. Moving just to the right is the jog window. The jog window contains torch movement buttons. We can move the torch around the machine work envelope very easily using these buttons. The X moves the torch left and right. We can also use the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard. The Y moves the torch forward and backwards, and we can also use the up and down key on the keyboard to do so. The Z moves the torch up and down. We can use the page up and the page down keys to also move the torch. We can change the speed of the X, Y, and Z axis using the manual jog speed buttons located here on the left of the window. There is a fast, medium, and slow speed change. The buttons located at the bottom of the jog window are for incremental precision movements. These allow for a one inch, one hundred thousandths, ten thousandths, and one thousandths of an inch movement of the torch. Now let's take a look at the far right of the controller screen. On the left of this window, you'll see the X, Y, and Z. Just to the right of that, you'll notice that there are a set of numbers. Each one of those numbers represents the exact coordinate of the torch on the work envelope. To the right of that is the feed rate. The feed rate is how fast the torch is moving. Now, the slider bar, we can use that to either manually slide it up and down and change the feed rates, or we can use the hot key. The hot keys are delete and insert. That will change it 1% at a time, up or down. The P1 and H box is for stored positions. If you have positions that you want to go to on a regular basis, you can store those positions individually with a name, like for instance, load sheet. It'll move all the way to the back and to the right so that you can load the sheet. Or you can have fast home. It'll move it from the far right corner or wherever it's at on the work envelope to the forward left corner so it's easy to home it. So now let's take a look at the bottom right hand corner of the controller. What we have is the work envelope. The work envelope is this red area. Now that will change with the size of the machine that you have. A 4x4, a 4x8, a 5x10, a 6x12. Over here you see this little red dot. That little red dot represents the torch in real time. So if we go up here to the X, Y, Z buttons that we went over earlier, you can see that if I push that on the X button, it moves it right, left, the Y goes forward, and backwards. Let's talk about the yellow crosshairs. The crosshairs represents the corner of the material, and that's set with these buttons here, which we're going to go over here in just a couple of minutes. You can also see down here this set of numbers. As I move the cursor across it, you can see that it changes. This gives you a location of the cursor on the actual work envelope, which might be important for setting up a job in the future. Let's turn our attention to the center window. As you can see on the top left hand corner, there are six buttons. There may be more given the options that you have on your machine, but for right now we have six buttons. The top left hand button is the home button. When you turn the machine on for the first time, you want to align and square that. The next button is the XY0. That button is to find the corner of the plate and mark it. The Z0. Z0 isn't typically used with the torch because we have torch height control on our machines. The laser 0 is for the laser alignment option. It allows you to precisely mark on the work material where you want the torch to be. Press the laser zero and the torch moves to that offset over the top of where the laser was marked. The override button is there to override the z-axis and bring it to its home position. The engraver button is used if you have the engraver option. Below that you have our material list. It's a drop-down box and it has all the material that's in the hypertherm manual. 
Target voltage. This is the voltage that's set from the hypertherm parameters. Arc voltage. Arc voltage is the actual voltage that it's running. The torch button. That turns the torch on and off manually. The last thing I want to show you is some of the highlighted features of the command bar. So we're going to move right up there now. The green button is the start button. It also, you can use the return key on the keyboard. The next button is the restart button. Very unique thing. If you have a tip up, the collision shuts the machine down. All you have to do is come in here, push OK, and restart the job. You can also back it up, move it forward, and start the job. Other highlighted thing I want to talk about is if you lose power to the machine. When you turn the machine back on and home it, go back into the restart, it'll already save it there, push OK, and restart the job. Let me close this down. The next thing is the file. We can open a file from this, or you can open a file from there. The next thing is the G-code. You can edit the G-code or view the G-code, but you won't typically have to use that. The last feature I want to show you on the command bar is the eyeball. That's the preview. If you want to preview a job before it starts, you click on it, it brings the preview onto the work envelope, and you can see the cut area and the rapid movements. Now, let's go ahead and simulate running a part. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clear any settings that are in there to, to eliminate any possible confusion. First thing I want to do is I want to come down here to the command bar, enter G92, enter, and you'll notice the crosshairs disappeared. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to the home button. I want to push home. That puts the torch back to the home position. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to clear all the history. So now that we've cleared all the settings and we've homed the machine, what do we do next? Well, we've got to go ahead and load a sheet. So we're going to go up here to the P1 settings and I've got load sheet there. There's also another setting in here I've already pre-done for quick home. But we're going to use the load sheet because that's going to move the gantry and the torch to the far right hand corner. So let's go ahead and push go. You'll notice the torch is moving diagonally across the work envelope to the far right corner. There we have it. We can load the sheet and at that point, what do we do next? The sheet's in there, it's all squared up. We need to move the torch back to the lower left hand side of the material. So we go back up here to a preset commonly used setting and we go to quick home. We push go. Now, you see it moved it all the way down to the lower left corner that would be the material. Now, you would have to normally set this with the X and Y buttons here in the jog screen, and you'd get that on the edge of there. Then what you would do is you'd push X, Y, zero. Now, you see the crosshairs come on it. That is with the starting point for your job. So what next? Well, we need to load a job. You can load a job two different ways. You can use the thumb drive or a network. This machine's capable of having a network hooked to it. But we do not want to run directly from them in case we have a power loss or there's an interruption in communication. The job will just disappear, the torch will stop, and it won't know where to be. So we don't want to do that. We want to transfer that file. So let's go ahead, come up here to file, and we're going to open that. Now I'm going to take this file, I'm going to left click it, drag it in the document, I'm going to replace what's already there, and I'm going to close out the thumb drive, and I'm going to go to document. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'll use this, I have Shop Saber logo in there, I'll go ahead and go to open. Now you'll notice the command bar, it's got a command in it, it has the actual job in it. Do we know if the job's really there, let's go to the preview button that we've talked about previously. Right there. Remember me saying it'll show the cut and the rapid? Well, the green is the cutting, the dotted line is the rapid. At this point, I think we should select some material. Now we want to go ahead and we want to change that material. This is where all those factory settings are. 
So let's talk about that. So now what we have to do is we have to select a material. Material list up here, we talked about this previously, we go up to configuration. We open it up and all the factory settings are there. But we've made it easy. All those factory settings that you would be paging through here with dirty fingers, ruining the book, that sort of thing, trying to find things. Oh, there it is. They're all right there on the screen for you. Now, the other thing is, is the newer models don't come with a paper copy like this. They come with a PDF. Now you're gonna be bouncing back and forth, back and forth, trying to get those settings. So we've made it easy. Now, we need to go ahead and select that material. We're gonna use a fine cut consumable and we're gonna use 14 gauge mild steel. So we're gonna scroll down with the mouse wheel and there we have it, 14 gauge mild steel fine cut. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Now you notice all the settings changed in here. Those are the baseline factory settings for fine cut consumables for 14 gauge mild steel. That being said, you may have to tweak this just a little bit to get it in to get a perfect part. So these are basic settings. Now, let's just say you're gonna to have to go and change your torch tip consumables. Well, we've even made that easy. Instead of having to go ahead and fumble through the book to find that, boom, just like that. Close this out and let's move right along. So now that we've selected our material, I wanna go over one more thing up in the command bar. There's a little thing called simulation. We have all our program in there, and I want to run a simulation. As you can see, there's no errors. It will look through the G code, make sure everything is okay before you run. Let's go ahead and close that out. Now, remember, if you need any assistance, our team can use remote diagnostics to log into your controller and help you troubleshoot files, sensors, and components. Now we're ready to run. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. As you can see, it's running. But while it's running, I want to show you something. This touch button, that'll go to green. The torch will go down, touch the material, come up to pierce height, it'll pierce, come down to cut height, and run. That torch should go to green. If there's any problems, we've already put in the system for you to troubleshoot. If it's red, it's most likely bad consumables. So, that is an important button. So now that we're done running the part, I wanna point out, the history bar here shows the job and some elapsed time. The elapsed time is actually the, the time that it took to run the part. Now, that's a critical piece when you're trying to quote or price a job. I wanna show you some other little features here. This is kind of small. Left click and drag. And just straight left click. Shift, left click, and we're back. So we have the ability to do that on our controller. One last thing I want to go over. We have a digital trace tool. Come up to file, digital, manual. Now, you'll note that another set of icons came up here in the command bar. That's for the digital trace. So let's suppose that you have a 32 coupe. Well, this is a good time to use the digital trace. You take a piece of cardboard, lay it over the front of the firewall, trace it, put it down on the machine, use the torch to touch off and mark points. When it gets all the way around, create a DXF, export it, put a toolpath to it in your software, import it back, and cut it. With that, my name is Lee Roadhamel. Thank you for watching. Any further comments or questions, contact shopsaber.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook.